Over the coming days, you're very likely to see some numbers, numbers which will create some potential alarm, possibly some false narratives around the EB transition slowing down. Will it actually change the trajectory and course of EV disruption worldwide? Well, General Motors and Ford, they've obviously slowed down EV production, but that doesn't mean that they won't be disrupted by someone else. However, that said, EV inventories in the United States have continued to grow. Here's what's happening. Here are the numbers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The EV transition is slowing, but in the United States primarily, where inventory is growing and the industry is hitting some hurdles. And one of the biggest hurdles here, guys, is that a lot of these manufacturers just haven't taken creating their first EV seriously enough. They went up to actually push down the cost of production in the same way that Tesla's been able to, so they're losing so much money on every EV they make. I mean, Ford losing $36,000, I mean, years after it's been producing these cars, is a big drain on the company. And it's one of the key reasons why it has paused production of its EV plants. However, there is a disconnect here. EV fluctuations today, in my opinion, will not determine long-term trends. And even analysts are saying the same thing. The long-term trend here is that EV adoption will grow continually worldwide, even if we have a couple of bad quarters, which is what is likely to happen in Q4 this year and Q1 next year. The shift to electric vehicles in the US is hitting a speed bump and another speed bump and another one. That said, Toyota is doing their best to slow things down a little bit slyly. They're saying, we told you people don't want EVs. And then yesterday, they commit $12.9 billion to an EV factory in the United States. Interesting. That said, EV sales growth has slowed down recently in the US. This month, General Motors delayed EV pickup production of the Silverado and Honda GM cheap EV deal was canceled. Ford said it is pushing back $12 billion in EV spending, reducing Mustang Mach-E production, thanks to, well, the vehicle not selling as well as it had hoped, and delaying one of two planned battery plants. EV only maker Tesla saw its revenue growth fall in the third quarter to its slowest pace in more than three years. Mercedes-Benz dealers are complaining about slow selling EVs, most of which are high prices, piling up on inventory lots. It took 82 days on average to sell the battery powered EQ models in September, according to Edmunds. Industry-wide last month, dealers had 97 days supply of EVs. Now that excludes Tesla and Rivian. That compares with 57 days for internal combustion engine vehicles. Battery electric vehicles made up just under 8% of US light vehicle sales in September. That's down from 7.8% in August. So 7.7% in September, 7.8% in August. Those numbers are pretty much a wash, but it means sales haven't grown very much over those months. Estimates so far point to a decline by another couple of percentage points to 7.5%. Still not a big difference though, to be fair. The reality of EVs is becoming apparent, claimed Toyota Motor Chairman Akira Toyota, when he spoke to reporters at the Japan Mobility Show last week, where he basically slammed electric cars. But then, only days later, Toyota did commit, like I said, to nearly $13 billion on one of the biggest EV factories in the world, which we built in the United States. Anyhow, for the time being, the main issue is sluggish demand, despite a robust supply and growing selection of EV models, said Lance Eisenman, CEO of Mori's Automotive Group. That's related to range, anxiety, and cost. As the early adopters have adopted, the average consumer is not willing to pay a premium for an electric vehicle with a range of 300 miles or less, he said. Now, I'm not sure I agree with that, but I'm just sharing with you the opinions of some so-called experts. Eisman's group, which includes more than two dozen dealerships in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, has a 100-day supply of EVs. Their 21 brands include Ford, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Audi, Volkswagen, Hyundai, and 
Kia. Ebbs and flows though, says Automotive News. There is a disconnect. Fluctuations today determine long, won't determine long-term trends, analysts say. It's not going to be a tidal wave immediately. It's going to be a rising tide, said Chris Hobson, an analyst at S&P Global Mobility, who said that even in spite of this slowing demand at the moment, sales will ramp up over the next 12 months considerably. Ballooning inventory has prompted some automakers, though, to reassess their EV launch timeline, said Stephanie Valdez, Streety, Director of Industry Insights for Cox Automotive. The pattern is similar to the ebbs and flows of gasoline vehicle production, she said. When you see that production isn't matching consumer demand, you adjust. Since this is such a huge transition, we're going to have all kinds of bumps in the road. But that doesn't mean that this transition won't happen. Cox expects automakers in the US to sell more than 1 million EVs this year. That represents very rapid growth, said Valdez Streety. It took five and a half years to reach the first million EVs sold in the US, according to JD Power. Only 18 months later, the industry hit 2 million in December 2022. Now it will take only 12 months to reach 3 million. So as you can see, even though we're hitting these pauses and months that are not quite as good as previous months, things are still marching forwards. Although the transition to EVs will continue, exponential growth will of course level off over the next year, said Sam Ferrani, Vice President of Global Vehicle Forecasting at Auto Forecast Solutions. Now is this story though relevant to China and Europe? Not so much. EV sales in China and Europe continue to grow at a rapid pace. Even in China, where the economy is clearly struggling under massive property market defaults and debts, I mean, so many Chinese people invest in property instead of buying a new car, and they've lost huge amounts of money because of these ghost towns in China and because of property market collapses like Evergrande. A lot of people were invested in Evergrande. A lot of people have lost a lot of money. That said, Chinese consumers still have a higher level of savings than any other country in the world. There's plenty of disposable income still available. And therefore, EV sales are still growing. The thing to keep in mind as well is when EVs cost the same as gasoline-powered vehicles, most markets respond to that and consumers buy EVs instead. That's what's happening in China. Early adopters have already purchased EVs though, in the US, say experts, in the next phase of the market. So that means there are too many vehicles and not enough buyers. It's not a market where you can charge $80,000 for every EV that comes out anymore. Now, no one's really doing that other than Mercedes, BMW and Audi. And I believe that we will see continued growth in the US. But I mean, we're getting a bit of a slowish point now. But it won't be long before we see a jump and an increase in sales. I think a lot of consumers are waiting for new Tesla vehicles to arrive. I know there's a lot of people in America that are big fans of the brand, even in spite of you know the polarization coming from Elon Musk. I believe that people still believe Tesla vehicles are actually a bit better than the alternatives. Six-digit price tags and unreliable charging are keeping many EVs on dealership lots, including vehicles like the F-150 Lightning. Early adopters knew exactly what they wanted, and they'd pay for it, said Eisenman. It's a tougher conversation to try to move someone to an EV that hasn't considered one before now. The next set of buyers will be looking for a vehicle for practical reasons. Selling to those shoppers will be difficult, or at least more of a challenge. EVs logged an average transaction price of $50,683 in September, around $3,000 more than the average gasoline vehicle, according to Cox. But the average EV that was sold was smaller in size than the average gasoline vehicle. So realistically, the transaction prices are still around about $10,000 higher on average for EVs versus gasoline vehicles in the US. And that's even after market leader Tesla's price cuts reduced the average EV price and narrowed the gap between gasoline vehicles. Now, EV charging is obviously another obstacle, but... That said, if we look at the recent commitments to EV production, we're now seeing these mega EV charging factories popping up in the US, committing hundreds of millions of dollars simply to manufacturing their chargers themselves. 
getting ready for these mass deployments that are going to be happening all across the United States over the next few years. However, it is worth considering that installing a home charger and the mental hurdle that can be for some people is an additional customer cost, or at least an obstacle for some. Home charger installation typically costs only a few hundred dollars, but the price can triple if the homeowner needs new wiring, panels, or outlets, according to JD Power. More than two thirds of EV owners get a home charger, JD Power said. Even as automakers revise their investments and EV rollout timelines, their ultimate electrification goals are unlikely to change, said Fiorani. In 2027, when General Motors and Honda once planned to launch EVs priced at less than $30,000, it meant that there was a market for that product. Now, the fact that GM and Honda have canceled that, that deal doesn't mean there aren't consumers waiting for cheap EVs. There are. There's, I believe, millions waiting for compelling EVs that cost less than $30,000. When they arrive, which they inevitably will, it's just a matter of time, I believe uptake will skyrocket. Now, the other key thing is the US market is very dependent on sales of pickup trucks. And currently, pickup trucks have some pretty major hurdles to overcome, but they will be overcome. Energy density in battery packs is improving, range is improving, and those things will only get better over the next few years. If automakers give up now, when the market is less stable, They'll fall behind in a few years and simply be disrupted. There are many market variables to stitch together, said S&P's Hobson, including pricing, eligibility for federal purchase incentives, and consumer preferences. But it's hard to get a definitive path to say something changed in the last four months that is going to completely change the dynamic of the industry and where it's going, he said. It's not going to be a smooth ride. Now, I agree. It won't be a smooth ride. But here's the thing. Realistically, Tesla are planning and now have all the permits for their Mexican factory. It's all sorted and ready to go. That factory will be built very quickly in much the same way that the factory in Shanghai was built. They do things differently in Mexico. They do things very quickly. They don't let things stop them and get in their way like they have in Germany with Tesla's factory over there. I believe Tesla wants to accelerate its production of the Model 2 and it's sort of in a position to do so. Keep in mind as well, there are other automakers bringing in affordably priced EVs. It's not just Tesla. If North American automakers wait too long, Chinese automakers will enter the market and begin disrupting them. So whilst we're seeing the American EV market have a bit of a slowdown, the same can't be said for other places such as Australia, China, Thailand and Malaysia in particular, especially Thailand. And of course, Europe, where EV sales continue to grow almost every single month. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.